Before early humans even really settled down, there's evidence that when we met, we exchanged things we had made or things we'd found. But as soon as humans started to cultivate the earth and form societies, we started to specialize, and that meant that we not only loved to trade, we had to. Now often when we think of trade, we think of long distance trade. We think of caravans loaded with exotic goods, but for our story, we have to talk about local trade. Because here's where we run into the problem of coincidence of wants. Or rather, we run into it everywhere, but if we fail to solve this problem at the local level, society breaks down and we can't have the specialized trades we need to run anything beyond the smallest gathering of people. So, what is a coincidence of wants? It's the basis on which trade can exist. Let's say that I make shirts and you grow food. Well, if you want a shirt and I, I want food, start. awesome, we can trade. But if I don't want your stupid food, or if you're all full up on shirts, well, we can't trade, can we? And that starts becoming a real problem for society if I want food, but you don't want my shirts. Maybe I can find somebody with some third good that you do want, that but that means that a lot of time is consumed by trading. And if I can't find some other good you want to trade for, well, there's gonna be trouble. And this problem runs even deeper than we sometimes think about when you consider the lack of refrigeration and transportation. Imagine I'm a fisherman and you're a farmer, and let's say that we want to trade. Well, there's this problem. Your harvest you only comes in once a year. I can't trade you for a harvest you don't have yet, and all of those extra fish I caught today are going to be pretty rotten by the time your harvest comes in. And while this may seem like a very specific example, no, trade for food was probably the most prevalent trade of the ancient world. So we need to find a third good that we both want that we can trade for. But wouldn't it be convenient if there was some universal third good which everybody wanted and would trade for, so we didn't have to do some long chain of bartering every time we wanted something? Enter money. All money is, is a third good that doesn't spoil and that we all agree has value, thus becoming a unit of exchange, an intermediary good by which all other goods can be traded. And while we often think of coins made of precious you metals for this purpose, sense. the truth is, so long as it's durable enough and hard enough to procure, anything can serve as money. Tangent time! Turns out we have used a lot of weird stuff as money over our history. For example, cattle have often served as money. I mean, they're fairly durable, they last for years, they're practical, and they're reasonably scarce. When Europeans arrived in the Americas, alcohol often served as currency. You could literally drink your paycheck. Cigarettes have often become money of prisons and POW camps. Back in ancient China, money in the shape of tools and then knives became some of the first examples of precious metal money.